Friends, if you could open your Bibles, we're going to read one verse, and one verse only to start off with. It comes out of Philippians. And over the last 18 weeks, we've heard preachers out of the book of Acts on hashtag anything can happen. Do you trust anything can happen? Absolutely. We heard Christian last week speaking on uh, silence the negativity. That was phenomenal, Christian. We, we heard Stephen preach the previous week on stepping out and, and stay in step with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit closes doors. Sometimes he, opening, he opens doors. The previous week, we heard Rory speaking on, uh, who are you, Lord? What shall I do? And I asked the question, I said, Lord, who are you? What shall I do? And one of Clint's friends from the United States visited us. And that week he walked into our meeting at, in the war room like every Tuesday we have. Where we, where we go to war on behalf of the people of 3CI. And we were about eight men around that t- table. And he said, I've got something in my heart. Can I share it? And he says, open your Bibles at Philippians 1. And he said, can we read from verse 8, 19 to verse 25? And he looked at me and he said, Eugene, will you read it for us? (laughs) Sure. (laughs) And as I started to read, I read verse 19. And I read verse 20. But when I got to verse 21, I just sobbed. You know, when, <laughs> it was holy, friends. But you know when you cry and it's ugly? <laughs> it's <laughs> Yeah, Clint's laughing, Pete's laughing. It was ugly. <laughs> you know when the cry is so deep, you can't control it and you actually sob. And I don't know how long we just sat in the, under the presence of God. But you know why I cried, friends? Because my dad lived it. I cried because my dad lived this verse. Let's read it together. Philippians 1, verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ. And to die is gain. That verse there, friends, is on his tombstone today. Why? Because they came to my mom after his death and said, Teresa, what do you want on his tombstone? And he said, she said, the first thing out of her mouth was for Rossi to live was Christ. And to die was gain. I want nothing else on his tombstone. I want for me is to live Christus and his servants. For me to live as Christ and to die as gain. And this preach was birthed out of that moment. Thank you for inviting your friend Clint from the United States to remind me of my dad. And I thought about this morning, and I thought, Dad, if I can sit with you one more time, what will you tell me? And he'll say to me, Eugene, my boy, I'll be gone. I won't be able to tell you, but take the word. And go and read about Dr. Luke. And Dr. Luke, he will give you an orderly account in the book of Acts of the life of Paul, and he'll show you how Christ how he loved Christ in his everyday life. So my boy, you go, and you go and study the book of Acts, and you'll see how to live Christ. And that is my dream for you, to live Christ with everything you have. Everything you have. You see, friends, Luke, Dr. Luke, yesterday I rode bicycle with Dr. Andres. So Dr. Andres, go and read Dr. Luke. He'll teach us. Teach us together. Give us bicycle stories. Dr. Luke was so impacted by Paul that 16 out of 28 chapters 
He told us how Paul lived his life. He lived it for Christ, friends. He lived it in Antioch. He lived it in Philippi. He lived it in Thessalonica. He lived it in Corinth. He lived it, friends. You know, Henny Willifir, where are you? Henny, Henny, where are you? Henny, you might think the Munga is far, buddy. 1,200 kilometers. Paul walked 16,000 kilometers living for Christ. 16,000 from city to city, from town to town. What is God calling you to? What is God calling you to? So we're going to, for the next couple of moments, we're just going to look at some of the places that Paul visited and how he lived Christ. Is that all right? So it's one thing to say for me to live as Christ and to die as gain. It's another thing to live it. So we're going to look at Antioch. So what happened there in, in uh, Acts 11, you can turn to your Bibles in Acts 11 or you can just follow on screen. Stephen was stoned in Acts 7, and after he was stoned, the church scattered. Yeah, after he was stoned, the church scattered, and they went to uh, Phoenicia, and they went to Cyprus, and one of the places they went to was Antioch. And the church in Jerusalem heard what happened in Antioch, and they sent Barnabas there. What's the meaning of Barnabas? Son of encouragement. So they sent him there to go encourage the church, friends. And let's, let's, let's read it. Let's read it. I think I'm going to need my, jeez, when you get to this age, she's mom. I know what you've gone through for years. Sorry, mom. <laughs> Acts 11 verse 22 says this, now, now news of, uh, of this reached, um, reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas uh, to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, not man, what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all your hearts. 3CI, remain true to the Lord with all your hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit. 3CI, be full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus and looked for Saul. We know Saul's name is also Paul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught Great, uh, great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians for the first time in Antioch. For the first time, friends. That's where the church just grew. And throughout the book of Acts, we read many, many, many times where Paul and his companions went out from Antioch. They preached in the churches, and then they came back to Antioch. And they went to, out of Antioch, and they came back to Antioch. And it says Paul and Silas, and then Paul and Barnabas, and Paul and his companions. You know what, friends? Paul was not a lone ranger. Paul understood something about community that we got to grasp. He wasn't the lone ranger. God added you to 3CI. God added you to a life group. If you're not in a life group yet, tuck into a life group, friends. Tuck in. If, if, if you found a life group leader and said, uh, uh, I'm full, tell him you bring your own chair and you'll sit outside the window, but you'll be part of a life group. Just tell him you're coming. Don't ask him if he's full. Just, just tell him you're coming. They'll make space. They'll make space. Tuck into a life group, friends. And while you're here, add value. Add value. And when you go out from this place, go and change the world. Go and live Christ. Just go and live Christ, friends. We call 3CI home as Paul called Antioch home. We cannot stay here. Other cities and nations is in our very DNA. Very DNA. Ashley Bell, 
40 years old, all the way from Durban with Nadine and their children coming to plant 3CI so you and I can sit here today. And then they moved on to Bryanston, friends. We had Andrew and Lantinette, Luther and Sam moving to Stellenbosch. We have George and, and uh, Liesel Abers moving to Centurion. We had James and Vanessa Lennox. Went, uh, they went to Middleburg and now they're in KZN. We had Daryl and Michelle Fox coming here broken. Broken. God restored them and they planted a church in Benoni. Three years, friends, they're over 400 people. Over 400 people. Many others, friends. Jeff and Janie in Lisbon. Grant and Charmaine at the Breach Church. Leonard Rutten and his wife in Canada. Andy and Irene Lysevich, friends, from this house, moved to Auburn uh, to go to a university there, Auburn University in the United States. The United States is seven hours. Where they stay is seven hours behind us. Friends, on this day, a little bit later this morning, Annie and Irene will be ordained as elders of uh, Auburn Community Church because they loved Christ. If you've got Andy's number, send him a message. He loved Christ, friends. He just loved Christ. And if I would ask my dad this morning, I'll say to him, Dad, some of our friends are moving. What would you say to them? You'll say to me, say to them, Gareth and Megs, when you go to the United States, or to the, not to the States, to the UK, you go and live Christ. Aaron and Annika, with your family, you're moving in the next month to New Zealand. Just go and live Christ. Melissa and Hannes, you're moving to Korea. Just go and live Christ. Peter and Delicia, you're moving to Plet and then Mossel Bay area or wherever God sends you. Just go and live Christ. But then you send back a good report and you come and encourage 3CI because we need to stay fervent for Christ. We're doing it together. We're not lone rangers. And my dad would say to me, Point number one, we are not lone rangers. We, start, we stay living for Christ together. Where's God sending you, friends? We're doing it together. The next city we're going to look at is Philippi. And Paul and Silas came to Philippi, and we're going to read there, Acts 16, verse 12. It says this, From there we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. And we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the, the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to, to the women who had gathered there. Uh, one of those listening was a woman from the city of Tyra. Named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message when she and the number of her household were, say, were baptized. She invited us to her home. Say, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, Come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Erat, you're coming from Cape Town. You thought you're coming to 3CI and you got honored this morning. What did you come for this morning? Let's don't limit God. You might come and check out 3CI visitors. It's your first time here. Who knows what Jesus can do? Anything can happen this morning, friends. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in your heart. She believed and she invited Paul home. Friends, we can get so much from this passage. The point I want to make is she invited Paul and his companions to come to her house. When you meet Jesus, don't leave him here. Take him to your home. He will go with you. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Take him to your home. Take him to your wife. 
Take him to your kids. Take him to your parents. Take him to your colleagues when you go to work. Just take Jesus with you. Take him to your siblings at home. And may I be vulnerable? If you want to know how you live Christ, just ask those who live with you. Wow. I asked the questions and I got some honest answers. And I'm telling you, I'm a pastor. I'm fulfilling the role of a pastor and I had to make some adjustments. Because one of my kids said to me, Dad, I wish you were more gracious to 3CI, more gracious, as gracious to us as you are with the people of 3CI. And it hit me hard. And I made some adjustments. Because we can't live it out there if it doesn't work at home, friends. If it doesn't work at home, if Jesus is not in your house, don't try and export it. Don't try and export it. Take Jesus into your home. Be vulnerable. Is your dad an alcoholic? Stop criticizing him. It's the kindness of God that draws us to repentance. It's not easy. If your family doesn't serve Christ, you, be, you go and be Christ first in your home. Just take Jesus there. My dad would say to me, that's my second point. Eugene, take Christ. Take it to your home. Take Christ to your kids. Take Christ to your wife. Take Christ. We're still in Philippi. So through a series of events, Paul and Silas were flogged severely, the Bible tells us, and they ended up in jail. And instead of complaining, uh, they started living Christ by singing songs and hymns and prayers, and, and they just glorified him. And what happened next is the, the, the jail uh, doors flung, uh, flew open, and, and the chains fell off their, their feet, and, 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 and they were thinking of running. And the next moment, in, in Acts 16, verse 27, we, we read this. The jailer woke up. The jailer that was there woke up. And when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted. Say, Paul shouted. Don't harm yourself. Say it, don't harm yourself. Say it, we are all here. We are all here. When things go tough, friends, don't take the easy way out. Uh -uh. We call to live Christ. People that live Christ, don't take the easy way out. You see, Paul knew that he had a choice. He could run or he could stay. If he runs, it's a door that God opened, he's free. When he stays, he can get persecuted and, and, and he might, might be killed. And at that moment, he looks around and he sees a jailer that's in dire straits, about to kill himself and die without Christ. And he makes the decision there, I'm not going to go. And in verse 34, it says, The jailer brought them to, into his house and set a meal before them. That was before, uh, after he's asked Paul, How can, what can I do to, to be saved? And Paul explained to him the gospel, and out of the gospel, he invited him again. We see it again, friends. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, and he and his whole household he and his whole household. Imagine the storyline if Paul and Silas ran. CNN News, Twitter, Instagram, earthquake, prisoners escape, jailer dead. End of the story. End of the story. No salvation story. No joy story, no household story. What's your marriage look like? It's not an easy way out, friends. 
Let's build salvation stories. Let's build joy stories. Let's build household stories. Let's don't run. We love Christ. We don't take the easy way out. Friends, this is not an easy word, but it is the truth. It's the advice my dad would have given me. That was my, my next point. Thessalonica. We've got two more cities to go. Almost there. Thessalonica. Paul and Silas arrived in Thessalonica, and they went to stay with a guy called Jason. Now, we don't know much about Jason except that he invited them into his house. And um, uh, Acts 17, verse 6 to 8 says this. But when, um, we're going to read it now, just before we read it. I went to stay in his house, and by staying in his house, he went to the synagogue and he preached the gospel. And there were some angry Jews and some jealous Jews that chased him. And they didn't like what they were seeing, and, and they were looking for Paul and Silas. And then they went to, to Jason's house, and this is what it says. But when they did not find them, that's Paul and Silas, they dragged Jason and some of the other believers before the city officials, shouting, These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decree, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bond. They made them pay, friends. They didn't say just a couple of bucks. They posted bond, that's big money, and let them go. The point that I'm trying to make is this. If Jason didn't give Paul and Silas a place to stay, the gospel wouldn't have been spreading and we wouldn't read this passage. When we, when we love Christ, we open our homes. We invite people in. We do it weekly. Our life group leaders invite people in weekly. Often I hear of people just sporadically inviting people for meals after service. And somewhere along the line, people get saved. This one ends up, that, uh, ends up at that sport function and speaking to this one and people get saved and added to the body of Christ. Just open your home. Yes, people going to use your toilet paper. <laughs> we're going to share that. We, we're going to share coffee. We're going to share tea. Our carpets are going to get dirty. People are going to stay in our home and, and our electrical bill will double. Why is that? Because we live Christ. We don't live for ourselves. Friends, let's don't enjoy uh, the comfort of our own home. Let's, let, let's share it with others. Who knows what will happen? We wouldn't have read this story if Jason didn't open his home, friends. During the call conference that we had, and, and, and I trust there will be many more, but through the call conferences, hundreds, if not thousands of people were hosted by the people of 3CI. Thank you. My friends in Namibia are serving Christ today because of you. Mozambique are serving Christ because of you. Zimbabwe is serving Christ because of you. Canada, the UAE, India, the USA, Stellenbosch, Bloemfontein, Lisbon. The list goes on, friends. Serve Christ because of you. Thank you. Continue to open your home. You don't know what's on the other side of your yes. If you don't feel God sending you some, somewhere, you've got a role to play. Open your home and let's touch the nations and change the world. Amen? My dad would say to me, remember my boy, we love Christ. We open our homes. And the last city, for, for time's sake, I'm going to close with this one, Corinth. Paul went to Corinth, and when he got there, verse 18 of chapter 18, or sorry, chapter 18, verse 2 says this. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker, 
as they were, read this with me, he stayed and worked with them. He stayed and worked with them. Clint didn't know it was one of my points. But I often get the question, Eugene, how do I get into full-time ministry? Say this with me. We are all in full-time ministry. Say, we are all in full-time ministry. Say, I am in full-time ministry. Now go and live Christ. Just go and live Christ. Just go and live Christ. If you're a doctor, then doctor. If you're a pilot, then fly planes or choppers. If you're a cameraman, just take pictures. If you're a teacher, just teach. If you're a student, just study. But whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability. Be the best engineer that you can be. Be honest as a businessman. Let people flourish under your generosity. When someone makes a mistake, encourage them. Just live Christ. Change the world, friends. Change the world by starting in your workplace. You know, we read Priscilla and Aquila and Priscilla because they sat around the table and they learned from Paul. Because they worked together. Later on in chapter 18, at the end of chapter 18, we read that they met with a guy by the name of Apollos. And he loved Jesus. He was a learned man. And they taught him adequately a little bit more of Christ. Because he understood John's baptism and not Christ's baptism. Why? Where did they learn that? Around the table. Where did they learn it? Paul was a tent maker when he held the canvas and he had to put the rivet in and he hit the hammer and he hit his thumb. The language that came out of his mouth <laughs> taught, it, taught them that he's living Christ. What will come out of your and my mouth? You know, it's in those difficult, there you go. <laughs> I'm on your side. I'm on your side. <laughs> Same boat. You know what, friends? When we don't realize the impact that we have on the people that we're working with. Just love Christ. My dad would say that to, this to me. We love Christ, my boy, through whatever we do. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Love Christ. I close with this. When you walk out of this auditorium, there's a map painted on these walls. When you walk into the cube, you see cityscapes. When you walk into Kidgeridge, you see cityscapes. When you walk into the playground, you see cityscapes. When you walk into our offices, you see pictures of cityscapes. You walk into a kids' ministry, you see cityscapes. You walk into Smallville, the tot zone, you see cityscapes. Why? Because it serves as a reminder. This is our home. But we need to go out there so much more, friends. And doesn't matter where God sends you, to your workplace, back to Cape Town. Doesn't matter where you are. You're going back to Germany. Just go and live Christ. When you see those cityscapes, may it be a reminder. Just go and love Christ. My dad would say to me, my boy, now sit down. You've spoken too much. You've learned these lessons. Now it's no more talking. No more talking, my boy. You talk too much. Now you've got to go and live. And my boy, Dr. Luke was right. He gave an orderly account to Theophilus. Now I want you to go and do this, my boy. You're not a lone ranger. We love Christ together. We love Christ when we're at home. We love Christ. We don't take the easy way out. We love Christ. We open our homes. We love Christ through what we do every day. Because for me to love is Christ. And to die 
is guide. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.